today I present you with our very first hardware versus video and I'll be comparing the NVIDIA RTX 4080 with the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX. Nvidia RTX 4080 is from the new 40 series line of GPUs from Nvidia. Although it's not the highest tiered graphics card from this new series, which is actually the 4090, it's still up there in terms of power. The 7900 XTX is AMD's response to this new line of graphics cards being the highest tiered card in the new 7000 series. Although it is the top of the line card from the 7000 series, AMD have made it clear that this card isn't out to compete with the Nvidia 4090. But a better point of comparison is the NVIDIA 4080, which is what we're going to be comparing it to today. The first point of comparison that I want to address is the price of both of these cards. The NVIDIA 4080 comes in at a whopping £1,199, whereas the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX comes in at £999. This is quite a big price jump. You can't always get GPUs at their retail prices because of stock issues, but the Nvidia RTX 4080 is finally seeing enough stock to be able to find the card at retail price. The 7900 XTX on the other hand, not so much. At the time of filming this video, the cheapest that I could find the card was £1,031. This isn't too big of a price jump, being only a £32 difference from retail cost, but it's still something to consider. You're not actually saving £200 here if you're having to spend extra to even get the AMD card in hand. Even though you are paying over slightly for the AMD card, stock isn't hard to find. Unlike with some previous GPUs that we've seen where you've literally had to set up sniper bots or fight other people for stock, you can actually find these GPUs quite far and wide. To begin with, the NVIDIA RTX 4080 has 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM. The AMD RX 7900 XTX on the other hand though, beats this out by a mile with 24 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM. However, despite this massive disparity in memory, the other specifications tend to be quite similar and Nvidia actually take the prize here. Nvidia's card presents third gen raid tracing, whereas AMD's card only has second gen. It's hard to compare the actual architecture of the card though, because there are two completely different chipsets being used here. Nvidia use their classic Nvidia ADA Lovelace technology, whereas AMD use RDNA3 chiplet architecture design. AMD's chiplet design technology has been historically successful, with the second generation being featured in the Xbox Series X, S, PS5 and the Steam Deck. It really is a great piece of kit, but has AMD utilised it well? If you're someone who's looking to play games in 8K, then fear not, both cards can output up to 8K resolution at 60Hz. And you can also get 4K at 240Hz from both cards. Both companies have also released their own version of Super Resolution, which is a way to optimise your gaming experience by giving you a bit of a performance boost and a resolution boost. In my testing, I didn't find that one iteration beat out the other. Both of them performed amazingly well and gave me that performance boost and a bit of a resolution upgrade, though it wasn't really noticeable considering I was running games at the highest settings anyway and they already looked great. And with that, let's delve a little bit deeper into the performance of these cards. Now, we all know what you guys are here for, the frame rates. And to be completely honest with you here, it was a little bit back and forth between these cards when it came to frame rates, and it depended highly on what type of game it was. The first game I tested was Valorant because you can get a crazy amount of frames, and the Nvidia RTX 4080 actually beat out the AMD card here, but only by a very slim margin. With the 4080, I managed to get average frames of about 412, and the highest frames I got was 686. Whereas with the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX, which is an insane name to say so many times in one video, I actually got average frames of 340 and high frames of 614. This is a pretty big jump, but whether or not you'd even be able to find a monitor that refreshes at the rate of frames that the 4080 is putting out is a whole nother question. The second game I tested was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, where the 7900 XTX actually won. It had average frames of 191 and high frames of 298, whereas the 4080 had average frames of 163 and high frames of 244. The next game I tested was of course Cyberpunk 2077, which is well known for being a really intensive game. 
this game is really demanding so even though i'm using top of the line cards here i kind of wasn't expecting too much but was pleasantly surprised although the nvidia card won out in average frames the amd card actually won in terms of high frames the 7900 xtx had average frames of 66 and high frames of 838 and i ran the game multiple times to make sure this wasn't an outlier and it wasn't i was still reaching high frames of around this region the rtx 4080 had average frames of 181 and high frames of 469 so although the nvidia card had triple the average frames of the amd card it only had close to half of the high frames literally no idea why this is but clearly shows that the amd card has room for improvement here and the last game i tested was csgo just to see how an old classic would run with these brand new cards and it did pretty well but somehow the amd card actually had higher performance in call of duty modern warfare 2 with average frames of 177 and high frames of 399, I'm not really sure what went wrong here. CSGO is nowhere near as graphically intensive as Modern Warfare 2, so maybe the AMD line of cards just aren't really optimised for older games. Nvidia's card on the other hand presents a bit more of what you'd expect, with average frames of 354 and high frames of 578. So Nvidia is the winner here. But with some of these games, the frames get so high that I'm not sure you'd be able to visibly notice the difference. I sure didn't. My monitor has a 360Hz refresh rate, and even still, I wasn't able to really notice the difference between having 350 average frames as opposed to having 420 average frames. I feel like at that point, it kind of just looks the same. But if you do have a reason or need to have higher frames, then you know that Nvidia is the card for you. Next, I want to talk about thermals because the temperature disparity on these two cards was insane. The resting temperature of the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX was 50 degrees Celsius, which is insanely high for a resting temperature. Now I'm talking no programs running except from NZXT cam so I could monitor the temperature. The NVIDIA RTX 4080 on the other hand had a resting temperature of 35 degrees, which is a lot more expected. AMD, what on earth is going on here? Why is your car's resting temperature 50 degrees? My case has really good airflow, is really well optimized and has plenty of empty space in it to stop components all from heating each other up. But somehow I still found my AMD graphics card sitting at 50 degrees. This is insane. To put this into perspective, the NVIDIA RTX 4080 only ran at 50 degrees whilst it was running Cyberpunk at the highest possible settings with ray tracing on. So yeah, I'm really disappointed with the thermals of the AMD card. The AMD card reached temperatures of 65 in Valorant, 67 in Modern Warfare 2, 70 in Cyberpunk and 58 in CSGO. Whereas the Nvidia card reached temperatures of 37 in Valorant, 45 in Modern Warfare 2, 50 in Cyberpunk and 37 again in CSGO. Although AMD cards are optimised to be able to run safely at a much higher temperature, this was just still what really frustrating because you could feel the heat literally boiling the room up. Whilst I was testing the AMD card, I could feel myself getting really warm whilst playing games. There was so much heat radiating off of my gaming rig that I physically couldn't stand to be near it anymore after a long play session and my room would be so warm that I'd have to turn on fans, open windows just to ventilate it. And we're in the middle of winter by the way and I was still having this problem. Whereas with the Nvidia RTX 4080, my room was just always normal room temperature and my PC didn't feel excruciatingly hot to the touch. It was just sort of normal warmth coming out of it. So that's just something to consider, especially if you don't have a PC case with a lot of airflow or you have a smaller case where your parts are very close together. One thing I do want to talk about is the fact that the RX 7900 XTX actually has dual media engines with full AV1 support. This means you get much better encode and decode performance, which means that when you're streaming, you'll get a lower bitrate. I did find this ringing true in my testing when compared to the 4080, however it wasn't significant enough for you to notice it on stream, just in the numbers. However of course this is a feature that's missing from the Nvidia RTX 4080, despite being a higher price. I think overall both cards have their positives and negatives. Despite both bringing great performance to the table, the Nvidia RTX 4080 clearly wins. However, the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX 
comes in at a lower price point while still providing that amazing performance. Both of them give you access to performance enhancing softwares and despite one of them being a generation ahead in ray tracing, I couldn't really notice the difference. The ray tracing looked absolutely great from both cards. And in terms of 3D Mark benchmarks, the AMD card actually beat out the Nvidia card in every single one aside from Time Spy, showing that it clearly does have the potential to improve if AMD release patches to further optimize it. You can find the full 3D Mark benchmark results in the description below, just because there are a lot of numbers which are going to be boring to talk through. So what this decision comes down to is based on what you need more. Do you want to spend that extra money to get that boost in performance from the Nvidia RTX 4080, or are you happy with spending less while still getting great performance from the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX? And I hope I never have to say that name again, thank you. Have you guys picked up either one of these cards or are planning on doing so? Let us know in the comments below. In my opinion, the winner here is the NVIDIA RTX 4080, just because if I'm already spending hundreds of pounds, I'd rather spend the little bit extra to get a better performing card. If you've enjoyed this hardware versus video, then be sure to like and subscribe to this channel, where more will be coming soon, along with more hardware reviews. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Jasmine from the Mirror Gaming team, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Bye!